Please call the roll. Bird? Here. Hanson? Here. Coho -ho Kelly? Here. Brian? Here. Elsa Back? Here. Williamson? Here. Engstrom? Here. Uh, number two, approval of agenda. Any changes, Your Honor? There are no changes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Henson? Yes. Coho -ho Kelly? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Elsa Back? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Before we get into number three, uh, I do want to introduce our upcoming rec director, Nate Hudson. Come up and briefly introduce himself. There's a resolution for his position in the consent agenda. So, Nate. Is this all right, right here? Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone, uh, council, mayor, uh, city staff, and citizens, what a great turnout. Um, my name is Nate Osmondson. I, uh, I'm coming to you from the city of Johnston, where I worked for uh, seven years. Um, I am a proud husband to one, father of three. I, my wife's name is Joni. She works at the VA in Des Moines. And my three kids are Zoe, Gabriella, and Cameron. And uh, they keep me very busy. So I'm uh, very glad to be here uh, and uh, excited for the opportunity to work with you. And uh, if there's any questions anyone has, that would be so be 10. All right. So Nate is going to uh, begin with this on August 1st, will be his first day. And I'll just add, he's also a member of the military. We just came from the airport, so uh, didn't get to put my tie on. Uh, <laughs> so apologies, apologies for that. Welcome. Thanks so much. So important. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Number three, presentation of petitions and other communications. A, recreational center presentation by ISG. Perfect. All right. Well, council members and mayor side, thank you so much for having us or myself tonight. Uh, the last time we were here, we gave a little update on the community engagement process um, and where we're at right now. I wanted to kind of give you guys an update, but I'm Amanda Thomas. I'm with ISG and have taken over with um, Davis, who you probably remember her from the last time she was here. So um, the last time we were here, we um, talked about site selection and- Oh, got to turn. It's on, oh. there we go, wrong button. Um, and the community was kind of unanimous on finding a site in this zone two here, kind of in the center of the community. The reason why that one was so important was because of the pedestrian access, the uh, walkability proximity to several different schools in that area, along with um, the potential for future development and um, several other access points there. So after several iterations and looking at multiple sites in that area, we did come up with one potential property, um, have been in discussions with the owner. Um, you might be familiar, it's right next to Cap Irby Park, uh, just south of the existing middle school there and north of Ledges Elementary School. Um, so as we were looking at this site, like I mentioned, there were a lot of factors that went into why we decided this one. Um, and once we figured out, okay, there's 22 acres to work with, we started to lay out, okay, what, what could this site really be? And um, given the fact that we had done a preliminary feasibility study with SFC, in the previous phase, they listed out several requirements for what this project needed to be to be successful. And one of them being um, outdoor fields, these right now, uh, multi-use fields, just natural grass fields for right now. And along with access to existing pedestrian routes and um, a road construction <coughs> you see on the east side of the site, uh, Northwest. So then the facility itself, um, looking on inside the Wellness Recreation Center, um, looking at doing... Point it to my computer. Oh, what? It's pointed it to my computer. Oh. Well, 
maybe you click <laughs> battery said there we go so um the the idea on the inside being four full four full courts a basketball slash volleyball flex space with um, the option to add flex turf a retractable turf over one or multiple of the courts, a walking track above those courts um, also could be used for spectator viewing, and then a small playground and offices for multi-use. Um, you'll notice that at this phase, we do not include a pool. We did do some initial feasibility of the cost of a pool and did find that it would be cost prohibitive right now, but there are conversations in the works with um, both the school and the hospital to kind of balance and marry all of those things together. Um, so that was the um, initial uh, programming. And then when we're looking at the costs of this, so um, we're looking at roughly 18 million for the building itself, um, a, a parking lot, the natural grass fields, and then the roadway construction. The acquisition of the land is not included in this um, piece of the project right now. I believe there are other funds um, set aside for that piece. Um, and we have not yet completed a pro forma, but that is the next phase of the project. Um, as we're looking ahead to, yeah, as we're looking next, ahead to the next phase, that's that's the next thing that we're doing along with a free referendum. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, no, go ahead. Oh, no, you're, you're good. Uh, I believe that's most, but I'm open to any questions that you guys have. There. Sure. So let me fill in some of the gaps on the financial side of things. Um, as council discussed, uh, putting together bond language for a $10 million bond. And of course, you see up there that the total project cost be nineteen seven. Um, the remaining amount of money will have to be fundraised privately. Um, and there's a fundraising group that is going to be constructed. Uh, there are people willing to serve on that now. Um, and uh, so the $10 million uh, staff has worked on bonding capacity and financing capacity the $10 million bond could be paid for with existing bonds. So local option sales tax funds and existing uh, <clears throat> debt service levy without changing the levy at all. So that's on the financial side of things. Um, if council so chooses to uh, approve the bond language at our uh, August 5th, it would be for a $10 million bond, not the 197. Clear on that. Um, and then the land acquisition, um, the the city has set aside funds for uh, land acquisition in previous budget years that is available to pay uh, for any land. Land has not been purchased yet for that, but it would be available if the voters did approve the bond, the bonding authority. Um, are there any questions for either Dana or, or sorry, sorry, Amanda, or right. myself? <laughs> I get used to. Yeah, I know. That's all right. <laughs> So, Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> uh, people I've talked with are very interested if there's a pool. Yeah. And I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So when we were looking at just the, we are going to do a pro forma and see where this puts us. Um, but looking at the initial cost of the, the pool itself and how uh, pools are funded nationwide, they aren't um, self self-funded. A lot of them have a lot of additional pieces that go into them. So we were trying to make this first phase as self-funded as possible. I would say that um, we would be in a situation where we could eat either a pool or everything else with indoor and outdoor courts um, and the sports, uh, youth sports side of things. Uh, but uh, we will be working very diligently with uh, other entities coordinate a path forward so that we can utilize, uh, get as much utilization of it with as many different groups of people as possible. So the exact construction and nature of it is gonna have to be able to fit a wide variety of purposes too, but we'll have more buy-in from different entities if we go that route as well. So this is basically <clears throat> four basketball carts and a walking track. 
on the, on the inside of the yeah yep in a playground and conference rooms for flex space playground there's an in, because there's, indoor yeah there's an indoor playground in yeah. that too it's on the smaller side of things on the rectangle 19 million dollars and then the courts on the inside are flexible space so they can roll out turf if the soccer players want to practice on on the inside in the winter stuff like that that's included a, in this car yeah that one's included in i have a question have you um did you price out the cost of a pool uh any kind of estimate there yeah high level it was roughly around 13 to 15 million dollars when you say high level uh, uh high level just you know based off the of square foot cost of how many ballpark. lanes ballpark yes um mm -hmm. Did you did you perhaps look at a facility that was two courts and the pool just to see what that or did not ever really plan out? A yeah, site with I, I think because the pool was already over where we needed to be, we were trying to pull back as much of the overall programming as we could. Does it have locker rooms and? They'll they'll be like restrooms and those. Yeah. No. Yep. Locker rooms. Uh, I, I believe there were some locker rooms uh, factored in smaller, more like changing areas. But ultimately, what the council has to decide is whether or not to allow the voters to vote on this proposal, right? That's all the council has to decide because there's a private group of citizens that is would um, talk to individuals about this. Uh, I'm, not, not council. I'm just wondering how we're going to propose this to the public when we don't really have any details. Do you have the site? I mean, yeah, I just asked if you had locker rooms and we kind of didn't answer that question. We have changing areas and restrooms. So that would be a no. I guess it, I, I don't know what you define as a locker room. Like there will shower areas, that type of stuff. I think some of those details are more once we get into design. We we haven't designed anything yet. So is that going to happen before we go to when, Blinton? When is the final design? Yeah, when is that going to happen? We didn't design it until after it was approved. So the uh, the outer appearance, like whether that's metal, whether that's... Yeah, all, all of those, stone. Yep, all of that would get figured out once we know if we even can do a facility. What, yeah, so what the we're the, doing is so you... The, we don't have design kind of right. pictures that the public would look at and then vote. That's correct. So here's the, here's the deal is the council is not the ones that is on a yes committee that is asking the citizens for a yes vote. What you would be doing, what council would be doing is allowing the citizens the opportunity to give direction. That's it. And if the citizens are satisfied with the plan and what the information they have as they go forward, then they will give us direction to do that. And if they are not satisfied, they will give us direction to not do that. Does that make sense? Well, it's kind of our endorsement. It is not your endorsement. I mean, I think I want to make that very clear. Okay. It, the citizens have to give the approval. Correct. You you would be allowing them to either give have the their... approval or withhold the approval. I, I I was under the thinking that we were going to have more of a design final building structure to explain to our constituents what what you know what we could actually have or. Yeah. You know, I just, I feel like it's really hard to fundraise for something when we don't have those details. Yeah. The good thing about that is you don't have to do that party. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we will, once we get into the actual campaign piece of it, once we have, yes, we can move forward with that, then there will be some high level renderings again, like not in the weeds details of, hey, what is every doorknob, but more of like, hey, what is the overall vision for it? Oh. And the but operational it's not even, yes, exactly in the performa. But if it's not even, hey, we don't even want to explore this, then we won't put time into that piece of it. <clears throat> you're gonna provide financials. How are we how are we gonna make this work? Yeah, that's on the pro forma that they're yeah, that's okay. Good. And again, that's a crucial piece of information for the voters to decide. They don't have that information. So there's a piece of information for me to decide. Yeah, Seems like a lot of money for four basketball courts and a walking track. Uh, uh, question. When is the vote? The vote for if if council approves the bond referendum, it'd be on the November ballot, the general election ballot. 
So is that this November coming? Correct. Yep. And the committee is already formed, right? That would yes, there are fundraiser. several dozen individuals who have stepped forward that said that they would take on this task, and there's a chair of that committee as well. And again, that's not council doesn't have to do that. You're just giving the citizens this you know group of people that have stepped forward and volunteered okay. the opportunity to do that. So this will be on the August 5th meeting to vote on this. On the language, the language for the, the referendum added to the ballot. So basically, today you would be giving the approval to move forward with ballot language, and then on the August fifth, that would approve the ballot language. Okay. That would go on the November election. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. We need approval tonight yeah, yeah. to make the actual ballot language to write the actual ballot language for the August fifth. I think we already did that. Did we not? Yeah, we actually did. We had a resolution. Yeah, council that. previously they voted. Already voted. To so take I think this to a referendum. That that yeah, I didn't I didn't know know. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's correct. So we will bring forward your approval at the August fifth council meeting the wording of the referendum, and then it will come in the form of a resolution. Correct. Yes. That's what we have to submit to the auditor for to approve it. So that's the next step at the August fifth council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, B. Public hearing on proposed plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the Lime Slaker replacement project. Are there any public comments? Any written comments? Seeing none, this hearing is closed. Uh, we have one. Uh, Resolution 3231, adopting plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the Lime Slaker replacement project. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ho Ho Kelly? Yes. Norman? Yes. Hasselbeck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Number two, consideration of construction of bids for the Lime Slaker replacement project. Yeah. Perry, do you want to talk about the bids? Yeah, we had a bid opening last week for this Lime Slaker project and received two bids for the project. One from WRH out of the Manor Colony area for $650,500. And the other from Wood Rough Construction out of Ames for $743,700. Uh, both are reputable contractors through the bid forms, everything is submitted correctly. And uh, based on the requirement that we uh, award contract to the lowest responsible bidder, uh, we recommend uh, award to WRH Inc. out of a matter. If I could just add one thing, this is uh, of what our estimated costs were for this project of $586,000. This is $73,500 over what our estimated cost was just for the information of the council before you vote. I mean, I think it's important that you understand that. Do you have a way to finance that I'm assuming? Yeah, we, we, you guys have already approved going through SRF and the loans and things like that. So we'll, we'll have to make it work uh, within the projects. If that was the lower bid. So. Yes. Yeah. I make a motion to approve that. Like a this low bid. Yeah, resolution 3232, making an award of con a construction contract. Oh, sorry. Replacement project. Second. Discussion? Please call the roll. Kingstrom? Yes. Hilsebeth? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Sorry, guys. Yes. Henson? Yes. Cahoho Kelly? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Hilsebeck? Yep, the second time. <laughs> I should get in the order. <laughs> I'm sure about it. <laughs> Item C, public hearing to consider granting of an easement along Corporal Rogerson Drive to Interstate Power and Light Company. Are there any written comments? Are there any public comments? Okay, seeing none, this public hearing is closed. Uh, one thirty-two thirty-three resolution authorizing the execution of an easement between Interstate Power and Light Company and the City of Boone. So moved. Second. Session. Please call the roll. 
Norman? Yes. Beck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Ho-Ho Ke Kelly? Yes. Okay, uh, item four, public comment for items not on the agenda. Anyone have public comments? Go ahead, uh, come up to the, uh, the gate there and state your name and address, even though I know who you are. You can stand behind, it's fine. Oh, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Hi, my name's Dr. Nancy Woods. I teach at DMAC. I've taught, maybe if any of you had kids come out to DMAC or anything like that, I've probably taught them. I've been there for 40 years. I love Boone. I love the, the pro progress that Boone is showing, and I'm I'm just excited to be here. Um, the purpose of me being here, by the way, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight, and please pardon the casual attire. I was taking care of a, an abundance of grandchildren today, right before I came here. Um, I have two two points that I'd like to draw attention to. The first one's shorter than the second, so let's start with the shorter one, please. Pardon me. <laughs> Um, I have had lots of friends of mine in the city of Boone that that they own rental properties or their own personal public property or their own private properties. And right now there's a, an officer of sorts that goes around the city and is a lawn inspector, basically. This is the job of the lawn inspector with the city of Boone. And I'm wondering what the process is. So I came here tonight to find out what the official process of is. And I know this sounds like a minor event, but to people who own properties or land, home land owners right now, to have a lien put on your property is an exceptionally difficult thing to have to deal with. So my question is to the city council tonight, what is our official order of operations, basically. At DMAC, I, you know, everything we have has an order of operations. In physics and math, everything has an order of operations. So my question is, is when this officer goes around, identifies a lawn, how is the landowner or the landlord um, contacted? Are they contacted by email, text message, regular, uh, regular mail? And are they given a certain number of days to, to remedy the problem so that that avoids all of this other issue with a person coming in, mowing the lawn, then a lien put on their property, then you get this unnecessary, I'm sorry, this un, unusual bill added to your taxes. So that's my question. Dr. Would I gonna actually pass this over to the city administrator and he can tell you the policy. Thank you, thank you. I'm just wondering what the process is. Okay, first of all, for the notification, the ordinance allows us to put it in the paper of uh, before the season starts, for example, for mowing, which is a notification to our citizens that they're required to- I think that comes in the water bill, right? In our water bills that- Yeah, it might come in there too, but it's put in the paper. And uh, so that's the notification by law that we're required to do, that you're required to mow your yard. Absolutely. Okay, so that's the notification purposes. Uh, we had earlier years ago, um, sent out letters and um, gave 10 days, or I think it was 10 days back then. And the reason we went away from that is because he doesn't take any action until your yard is at least 12 inches tall and he measures, okay? So previously, by the time that he got back, sent a letter out to all the ones that we mow, when we mow, to 250 yards a season. And so the letter goes out explaining that. And then by the time the 10 days is up and everything else where he can send a contractor that we've contracted with to mow, that grass now is two feet tall rather than one. I'm, I'm explaining the process to you. Okay. So because of that, then we we change the work with the city attorney where we send that notification out through the paper and everything once a year before the season begins. So his process is he has a route that he goes. He knows some of the problem yards, obviously. And if he sees one that appears to be 12 inches tall, then he will get out and, and actually measure it. And if it exceeds the 12 inches, then he puts that on his list for that week that he gives to the contractor that goes out and uh, mows it. And then he keeps track of the yards that he does because we have to pay a contractor, correct? Absolutely. 
So we have to, we try to recoup our money from that. And I will state that the prices that we were paying that ultimately the landowner pays through that, uh, the assessment actually went down because if he's, there's a big difference from the contract is mowing 12 inches or 24 inches or 18. So the prices went down on what they charge. And then we do a, an assessment letter that we send to the county and assess it. And I will tell you that uh, there is a civil penalty that council approved a few years back because we were mowing so many yards. We tried to take action to encourage or motivate people to mow their yards. And there's a $50 civil penalty on the first time for this per season. And if we have to come back, there's a $200 civil penalty. And those, because there's so many, I will tell you that those, uh, those penalties fund that budget that we have every year. So we're not actually taking money from the general fund to, to, um, to run the community service officer budget because it's taken care of, because unfortunately there are so many that uh, uh, they come in on the civil penalties. Do you have anything to add? No, that's fine. You've explained it. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I make a comment? Yeah, no, go ahead. My comment would be, I don't know a yard that can grow 12 inches in 10 days. I really don't know that. What we're talking about is now. If it's, I know, like that was, was the old rule. It's on the piece where he said, if it's already twelve, and within the next ten days, it's going to be another two. Well, that's how I'm you should not get into. I'm using an example. It could okay. be twenty inches. Okay. It could be nineteen inches. Okay, either way, that understand that it's measured. I think that that was exaggerated. But another comment would be: in the past, I don't think email, text messages have been as freely available to us as they are in this day. Ten years ago, that wasn't an available option. But today, I mean, I already got notice of like three things sitting here since I sat down on my phone. So you, if you could send a text message to a landlord that says, the guy's going to come and mow on Friday unless you can get in there and get it done ahead of time, I think that would be an incredibly kind and fair thing to do. It would plus I don't I don't think the idea of certified mail needs to happen. I think the idea of just making an attempt at contacting through email and text messages, which are both free, cheap, and easy ways to do it. And I think that would be a considerate thing to do for the citizens of our of our city. Um, can I interject one Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. So <clears throat> if a citizen were to have been checked by the CSO, have been determined they take a photograph of the graphs that's too long, the list is made. The citizen doesn't know. Then they eventually they come right out after he's done and they mow their lawn. They wouldn't be mowed after that, correct? I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm no, what I'm saying. No, there. if it's taken care of, well, correct. Oh yeah, he's, if the contractor gets there to mow, he's not going to mow it. Uh, yeah, correct. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask the policy administration committee, uh, Chairwoman Williamson, um, to draft a policy to just uh, put a notification on the door that. You have been flagged for this violation, um, and your lawn has been whatever the verbiage you want. And it will in the next round that a contractor goes, your lawn will be mowed, um, you know, at a charge you, et cetera. But and that at least that gives a notification that you're on the list. And if they choose to take care of it in that time frame, don't specify doesn't have to specify what the time frame is because we don't know when the contractor is going to get to it. At least they've been notified. Yes, if you if we do a written notice. Um, then do they still have to go back to check to see? No, because if they if it's taken because care of, then then the contractor wouldn't mow it anyway. Right, but they've already made the trip there. The contractor. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no. Well, that's. But is the contractor already making multiple trips in one day? Yeah. yeah. So the point is, it allows them the avenue to take care of it on their own without having a follow up from the CSO. So it's no. CSO doesn't have to come and follow up. We have a hard time getting people to even put in a bid to do the lawn mowing job. Sure. And we've got 6,000 homes in this town parcels, and we're going to change it for 200 people? No, the point is just to give a notification that they're on the list, and they would take care of it on their own, and then the contractor would become... If they were given the opportunity to take yeah. care of them. And there's a, there's a chance that a person would do that inevitably anyway, right? 
just they were out of town for whatever amount of time, you know, uh, CSO comes, puts them on the list, and they're gone. And then they just mowed it out of, you know, sheer luck and happenstance, right? I, I just think it's the yard a matter needs, of just putting a note on the yard needed to be mowed before they left on vacation. Yeah, or or they got their mower fixed or any number of things, right? I think it, it's a simple act of just putting a note on right. the board. I think that's one more way to notify them. Yeah. And so we've covered, yeah, trying to make sure and that they not, have opportunity yeah. to take so I'd like it. you to draft that on your yeah. Thank and you. And then whatever that. comes up with, take action on that. I think that's incredibly kind and considerate. You know, there there has been chances that some illness happened or have you, I don't know. Any you, number of personal any, events. But, but if you watch Facebook, someone's always saying, can you come on my lawn? And there's people that will come help, so. What's your, you have a second item? I do have a second one. Thank you for your patience with me. The second thing I'd like to talk about tonight is, ready for this? Drum roll, please. Take a deep breath. Chickens. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I see that you're excited to hear about it. <laughs> All right, so my question is, I'm a, I'm a logical individual, and I've been asked by some members of our community to go around the city and collect signatures of people who would like to bring it to the city council for reconsideration. By the way, if anyone in here tonight would like to sign this, I brought it for you, please sign it. However, my question is why? Why am, I, why am I asked to do this? I was actually told 600 signatures the city council would laugh at and it'd be thrown out. We need a lot more than 600 this year. So that's my question tonight. Um, my question is, would you like to hear the list of benefits, the misconceptions? Would you like to hear any of these so that you can be convinced that this is something that, again, I believe the voters of this town should be asked to consider? So just... It's not on the agenda, so no action will be taken on this. But you know, I think just to summarize your your you, yeah. observations is that you've met a lot of people that are in favor of. Oh politics. my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yes. I just want the council to know that. So, and, yes, and I would like to ask for it to be put on the ballot. We can't. Well, so in Iowa law, there are not direct ballot measures. Okay. Like so that cannot be done, except for when we were talking earlier about a bond issuance. So I I was not a direct ballot measure state. Thank you. Uh, so yeah. council would have to, or, you know, decide that they would want to take action on this, put on the agenda. I appreciate your patience with this. I'm just wondering why I have to go do this when I believe so many of you have heard from people in your districts and your precincts that this is an important thing to the voters. You don't have to go do it. No, I, I know. And that would make so many of you happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I, I, I asked my constituents as well. Okay. You have to pour it out. I asked my constituents as well to reach out by email. I can go out and get signatures as well. I'm, I work a full-time job. I do this. I volunteer for search and rescue. I do plenty of other things to help out the community. And when I asked for people to reach out, I got 27 people to reach out to me. That was good. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, Thank if you, you want to us here. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Thank you. That's all I needed. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your kindness and your time. Thank you. Uh, number five, reports of standing committees. A, Policy Administration Employee Relations, Williamson. I have no report. Communication, no specs. The utility. No report. The Economic Development, Mormon. I have one discuss possible change downtown angle parking. Um, I put a sheet in front of you. Um, there's two sheets, option one and option two. It's been a little bit of confusion about the diagonal parking downtown as to whether it's from seventh to ninth or from six to ninth from six to ninth okay um from so from the police station all the way up to the bookshop right um drawing indicates the original configuration that's the first one um that shows what the original one was going to be so it's diagonal parking from seventh to ninth oh. northbound okay and then it will be diagonal parking on from 7th to 6th southbound in front of the bakery. And the reason it's done that way is because on 628, you all know the circumstances there. We not, we're not sure exactly what that configuration will look like. 
So we want to make sure that the bakery is accommodated and those businesses along that side of the street. Now, with that said, it's up to the council to decide that there's no additional cost to switch it to, so it's uniform. So if we want to put all the diagonal parking on the east side of the street, right, west side, west side of the street, we can do that. Everything would be southbound or we can leave it configured the way it is, so it's kind of half and half. That's totally a council decision. I have no recommendations. The only thing about the uniform part of this is if we move everything to the to the west side, so it's all southbound, when people coming into town, that parallel parking is done, it's full, they're probably gonna have to go up and turn around and come back down the street. I, I concur that actually had another uh, individual contact me about something similar on Keeler and Arden Street where it's single side angle parking and uh, many people do do an illegal U-turn right. at the end of those streets and his car has been struck several times about that and it seems a predominant flow of traffic south and north. That was the only concern that I had for... Yeah, and it gives them some variety. If, if you are going south and north, you have an angle you know, option. If you are going north and south, you have an angle option. So even though it may seem a little wonky on paper, it actually does serve a purpose. I, I just did the second option so you could see what it would look like. Yeah. And that, you know, it's, I have no personal preference about that, but um, we can we can certainly do whatever this kind of feels is the right thing to do. I like the option one with the mixed. Makes I would sense. agree the, the variety. Okay. Does the city staff have any opinions on this? I mean, on Wayland's? <laughs> oh, I miss anything. Anything? Yeah. I haven't necessarily seen seen this, but option one, which was the original option one would would be my support. Um, I I have a little concern about vehicles being faced downhill in the middle of winter, getting stuck. Build in there. I'd rather seven to nine and stay on the east side of the road, preferably. But good option one. That one. The other, the only other thing I. Have. I want you to be aware of is we talked, this council talked about not striping the parallel parking, right? And letting them park freelance. Do we want to do that or do we want to go ahead and designate the spot? That's my opinion too. I think we should designate because I think people will park stupid. If they park 15 feet apart, yeah, you need to pay that park in there. Yeah. Right? I think so. Well, I mean, in the if we were to add additional spots from that, it would be a small amount. Right. And as we talked about previously, we were adding 40% to the number of parking spaces. So, I mean, I, it's just something to mention before we start the striping process and stuff like that. So. Yeah, since we are adding the angle in, um, you know, previously, parallel was the only option. It might have made more sense to not strike that parallel, right? But since we do have the mixture, probably a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with whatever council decides. Does did it need to take action on this? No, are you good, Perry, on that? On the parallel? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, the parallel we talked before were along the street, right, north and south, but then to mark the size of the cars. Now they've said they want to do those lines, not just have just the one parallel. Okay, and Councilman Mormon was option number one. Original was option the original. If option number one is original, that's what you Three want. A. Then no action is needed. Three A with the mixed sides of uh, angle parking. Okay, <laughs> make sure we get that on the copy. Okay. okay. If you have any questions, you can double check with us. All right, that's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, you have a meeting before this? Huh? Give him, give him oh, I'm, yeah, I did. I should talk about that, didn't I? Yeah, we met down at uh, 6th Street. Where's that? Um, 6th Street. Uh, underground. What do they call that? Underground. 6th Street Underground. It's not on here. So, And we discussed a downtown incentive grant. Uh, they're putting in a kitchen and they will serve food out of there. They're doing that right now out of the Methodist church. 
and they're going to start their own little kitchen and pick up meal delivery type uh, place there. So uh, the committee was all about it. We approved it unanimously. Um, so just for your consideration, uh, it, it's it's going to it's a nice little project. It's really nice looking in there right now. Yeah. Um, so if I could interject, yeah, uh, absolutely. Chad Starling and Jenny Wright um, have been really giving back to this community in a lot of ways. There are actually two separate businesses in there, Sixth Street Underground, which is a, a fitness center. There are coaches there. And then Radicato, which is their meal business, which that. And so it's a meal order business, uh, you know, uh, small meals that you can take to lunch at work and things like that. Um, so they've just been operating out of the Methodist Church, as Councilman Mormon stated, and uh, they have seen a lot of success and they want to merge the two businesses together to serve many more meals, expand their market to Ames and things of that nature. So they've been really putting their all into this. I believe he said they would serve 350 meals a week. Sort of 400. Yeah. 400. They're very delicious. So that's Absolutely. pretty impressive. Yeah. So what was the address on that again? Um, right next door to the police station. Right next, yeah, that's the old, one of the old truck buildings. That's right west of Right it. behind the police department. David, if you want to go work out, they have some of the same workouts that I made you do. Oh, boy. The other place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's all I have. Okay, uh, number six, A, building official, uh, department reports, A, building official date. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Council, for having me tonight. Um, got a couple items for you. Um, first one is a request for an alley vacation. Uh, the location of this request is in the 1300 block of West 2nd Street. Um, the location is, even to be more precise, between 1310 and 1316 uh, West 2nd. Uh, the request was made by Jason and Her uh, Heather Ahrens, uh, who own 1310 West 2nd. Uh, that property had a, <clears throat> previously had a house on it um, that's been torn down now, um, and they're looking at building a new house uh, in the future down there. Um, the alley that uh, they're requesting is unimproved, um, has not been used by the public for quite some time. Um, at the point that we got the petition, we sent it to staff. Uh, I believe Whalen and his staff had no um, problems with it being vacated. Um, with the alley vacation request, we are required to send out uh, notices to the adjoining um, owners next door. Uh, Michael Young lives at the, the uh, other property adjacent to this. And he had no opposition to it. In fact, he requested that he get his half. And normally in um, alley vacations with the adjoining neighbors, they do have the right to get their property half. Uh, both the parties have got together and they decided to split the cost of the, uh, the vacation. And so for tonight, we bring it to you just for request to move forward in the process. If we don't have any opposition to it, uh, we would then set a public hearing, have a public hearing and so on and so on. <clears throat> I'd be happy to answer any questions. Motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Questions? Please call the roll. Elizabeth? <clears throat> Yes. Williamson? Yes. Engstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Kohoho Kelly? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Thank you. Uh, our second item tonight is um, we're looking to a, uh, approve a preliminary plat for the Hunziker's uh, Prairie Place project. Uh, we have been here before for rezoning on this, and this is the next step in the process. Um, Within this preliminary plat, um, just to note, um, we're looking at um, approving several different items. So within the, the preliminary plat, we're looking at approving a street name. Um, in their application, they gave us a couple uh, street name uh, requests. Uh, their first being Ida Place. Uh, we sent that to staff. Um, and checked with county and, and everybody agreed that that was the uh, 
the most um, approved of the two. So we're looking at um, Ida Place as the roadway within this complex. Um, this road will roadway will eventually be public. Uh, we'll be taking control of that once the project is done. Um, we also looked at a stormwater plan for this project. And we're also looking at a couple um, um, waivers or variances within this project. The, way, the waivers or variances that we're looking at is between the um, townhouses um, beyond the west side of the roadway and the three apartment buildings, they're looking at a reduction from 40 foot setback to 30 set, foot setback. The reason for the reduction was to be able to get that second set of homes on this Ida place for that. Um, our code requires 40 feet for the apartment buildings. Um, we didn't think it was a problem. We have given waivers uh, for other subdivisions very similar to this. So they're asking for that in addition to the, uh, the request of the uh, preliminary plat. Um, so again, we're looking at a reduction in the setbacks. Uh, re they're also requesting that the city take possession of outlot A, which is the stormwater uh, retention area for the drainage purposes only. The complex would be uh, responsible for any sort of maintenance, mowing, the normal everyday things, but we would have it for, as part of our drainage uh, for that area. Um, in addition to that, again, we're, we're looking at, uh, uh, so we got the preliminary flat, the two waivers, um, one being the outlaw A and the setbacks, the approval of the roadway naming and also stormwater plan. Um, the preliminary plan has been the planning and zoning. They reviewed all these items. They did uh, recommend to move forward uh, to council with those approvals. And I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding this. Chief Dave. <clears throat> move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Williamson. Yes. Simpson? Yes. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Ho-Ho-Ho Kelly? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Nelson Back? Yes. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, finance officer, Andrea. No report, sir. Uh, Senior City Attorney, Jim. No report, Your Honor. The Director of Public Works, Wayland. Thank you, Your Honor. Just give you a quick little update on the downtown story street lane overlay. Um, we we're a few days behind schedule. Uh, the heat, the Fourth of July holiday week, and the little moisture that came the week before that set them back a little bit. Some of the things we're looking at is on schedule right now. Friday and Saturday will be the final course of, of asphalt in that area. So it, it comes. From Come to an end next week. Monday was supposed to be the transition from the east side to the west side. I see that probably being Tuesday, Wednesday ish. Tomorrow we have Barry and I will all go down there for a progress meeting. We'll hash a few things out. Um, if you're following the schedule pretty closely, you can look at it. it. Talks about sidewalks and doing the crosswalks and stuff. Originally, we were supposed to do the crosswalks on this side of Story Street that late this week. Um, and then when we did the other phase, we were going to do a crosswalk at the end on that side. And then when we were done with that, we were going to come back and do the story street. Crosswalks. These crosswalks are going to be colored stamped concrete. So we have decided at the end of the project, it's best to do one intersection at a time and get the color all on one load of concrete. So it's uniform. It doesn't, it, mm -hmm. it can really look pretty tacky if it's off color. Pretty, pretty That's still, Would that still take about a day? It still take about a day. We still got it's concrete, so we got cure time for them to figure out what uh, <clears throat> things we've got to hash out and figure out tomorrow and and coming up is how we're going to stage that. I believe everything is going to transition kind of like it has. We have some days that can be made up. I feel, but the way I see it right now is Ninth and Seventh Street getting done and getting traffic moving across Eighth and Sixth 
where they can freely move from one side of town to the other, and then they can go down a block in each direction, but the intersection will be closed. Then they have to do a three point turn at the end or something, but having access back to the blocks and getting being able to cross Story Street is probably one of their biggest priorities right now. And then once 7th and 9th Street is done, then we jump to 6th and 8th and get those two done. Um, and probably three to five days for cure time on the concrete, we can we can discuss it and maybe, I don't know if we wanna put a modifier in there to speed up the cure time with the colored stamp concrete because it could affect the quality of the, of the stamp and stuff. So I think we work with them and get the best product we can is kind of what I'm looking at right now. So that's all I have. And once I know a little bit more and we're a little closer and I'll put a press release out to public about the changeover going to the other side. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Layla. Uh, e Library, Jamie. F Park Director, Superintendent, Mike. Thank you. Uh, just want a quick update. Last Park Board meeting, we had our regular business at six. And at 6.30, we had an informational educational meeting. And uh, Administrator Spear, Mayor Scott, Councilman Marvin attended. Uh, basically, just to answer questions that the Park Board had about the budget and the you know the operations of the budget. It went very well, and I uh, felt they learned a lot, I hope. Um, and then we had an update for uh, the 10 year plan that was asked of us. And we're about 60% through, but uh, we thought a good step would be to uh, get an inventory of all our parks, well, everything. And uh, we'll keep on going. I appreciate you taking the time to have us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, G engineer, and we'll turn this over to Administrator Scare. Thank you, sir. So uh, <clears throat> on it is the consideration of bids for all the roofs that we're doing at the water and wastewater. There is only one bid. Um, and when I'm done, I'd like Perry to talk a little bit about why he thinks there's only one bid and the, and the DNR regulations and everything like that. So that the bid for Five roofs between the water and wastewater is 961553. We feel it's important to do uh, alternate number one, which is the high service pump building uh, discussed with Perry and I. I thought that we needed to add that, uh, that, that we think that needs to be done fairly quickly. The other alternates can certainly wait. So that brings the total uh, to one million thirty six thousand four hundred nine dollars, and again, that's six roofs. The most expensive one was the water treatment plant building at five sixty three oh eighty eight. And if you could talk just a little bit about what this job entails and why you thought there's only one bidder and the DNR regulations and everything like that, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so we we talked to uh, folks ahead of time to find out uh, what the bidding climate was out there and. It, it, it's pretty obvious to us that most of the roofing contractors pretty much have a full plate or had a full plate already for the summer. Uh, luckily enough, this contractor, who is a highly reputable contractor, um, had a project that actually was postponed. So they were able to bid on this project to fill up the rest of their plate for the summer um, and have a pretty large crew available to work on this project. Another reason that we've been hearing it because of tor tornadoes that have occurred. And I really didn't even think about that at the beginning of this project, but uh, there's a lot of roofing going on in the summer. And these type of contractors that are, or the commercial type contractors, uh, even though they don't work with homes so much, they still do have a lot of work out there that they're trying to accomplish. The, the, uh, the cost of the project is a little bit higher than what the original estimate was mainly because the DNR at the water plant is requiring some extra work over there. There's a clear well roof that has seven roof hatches on it that have to be elevated. We have to replace all of the roof hatches. Uh, there's also a pretty extensive lightning protection system on the water treatment plant roof that will be torn apart when this roof comes off. So that is going to be added as well to this project. And there's also some other OSHA type 
<laughs> concerns that we're addressing with this uh, to make sure that the workers on the roof have fall protection. The roof hatches that are closest to the edges of the roof by law have to end up in, so we're adding those. It just kind of ended up being a little bit higher than the uh, CIP project was thought of. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Um, do you remember what the estimate costs under? Do you remember? It's 820. 820 is what we were figuring. That's Not for the bid alternates, but the. Oh, the, what we had in the CIP? Yeah. Uh, 820. 820. So from the 820, because of the higher cost and adding bid alternate one, we're at a million 36. I just make sure. The other thing I'm not to sure understand that. How many buildings were included in that? 820. I don't really know. Um, I believe there was eight. I had four on each plant. Six of the wastewater plant and then two of the wastewater and the one plant. Okay. Correct. So a total of six roofs is what we'll be doing if uh, council so chooses to approve resolution 3235. This funding also comes from, if you remember, the, you approved a while back the SRF funding. Uh, that we'll be applying for. And then we'll get the projects done. We'll see where we're at budget wise, uh, make the appropriate uh, additions or deletions that we need to make. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 3235. I'll second it. Any discussion? Question. Please call the roll. Ingstrom? Yes. Bird? Yes. Henson? Yes. Tahoe Kelly? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Elsa Beck? Yes. Williamson? Yes. Okay. Public safety, uh, Chief Adams is uh, on call tonight. Uh, we're two, Chief Weeble. No report, Your Honor. Uh, aye, City Administrator. Thank you, sir. Um, only one is discussed Ames Regional Economic Alliance inner city trip for 2024. As you know, there's Council has sent staff and or elected officials to the last two. Uh, the first one was over in Eastern Iowa. The second one was Purdue University at Lafayette, Indiana. So it's coming up again. The time is September 11th through the 13th. Uh, these certainly have been valuable trips, I believe, in the council. Uh, people who have went, I think, uh, think the same thing. My question, do you want to send anybody um, from the city on this trip. This trip uh, this year is in Fargo, North Dakota. The cost is twenty-seven fifty per person. If there, if you want to send staff, um, if you decide to send staff, uh, Andrea will be attending on my behalf this year. And if there's any elected officials that would like to go, I think it's elected officials. They've been valuable before. I mean, I haven't gone on one, but I think somebody should staff for sure. Go. Are there any elected officials that are interested in going on the trip? What do you need to know by Brenda? Tomorrow? No, yeah. We'll give it some thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's out of state, so we'll need authorization. Are you, can I ask, are you authorizing one staff member to go? Yes. Yes. Right, and any council member, and any council member that wants to go. Okay. Yes. All right. So then we'll know if you want to go. Get with me. We'll let them uh, know, and then we'll go from there. That's okay with the elected officials. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, number seven, consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. There will be no discussion unless a request is made prior to the time council vote on the motion. I make a motion. Approved. I'll second. You can call the roll. Bird. Yes. Henson. Yes. Kohoho Kelly. Yes. Foreman. Yes. Elsa Beck. Yes. Williamson. Yes. Ingstrom. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> number eight ordinances. There are none this evening. Number nine. Uh, mayor's comments. I have a few things. Um, uh, kind of go back to the last thing we talked. Well, an earlier thing we talked about economic development wise. Um, the Sixth Street Underground had a ribbon cutting with the chamber um, the other day, uh, very well attended. It was a, a great uh, event. Uh, they've been open for over a year now. And so uh, good longevity for that business. 
and it was a pleasure to go to that. Um, Fireworks show uh, got started a little bit late, had a hiccup in it, but uh, it turned out to be very good. Um, so I thank the police department for, I'm sure, an increased number of calls, uh, nuisance related and otherwise. And then finally, uh, we had our Main Street presentation on uh, July 11th. Uh, it was very well attended by uh, staff and uh, committee members and people in the presentation. And uh, it went off without a hitch. It went very, very well. And council members are here there as well. Um, and I have a very good feeling about uh, the announcement that'll come later this week. That we can celebrate as that case may be. So that's all I have. Uh, and I will turn it over to council member Collins. I will just uh, support that, that the presentation went really well. We had, a, I think, a very good turnout to represent um, the city of Boone. And I think they were impressed with how many of us were there. Um, and I think the quality of the presentation was really good. So I, I think uh, it looks good. We will hear sometime in the near future. Um, so we're kind of hoping that all goes through. The other thing uh, just briefly I wanted to say is um, I was I, I just went to the library to drop off books and this was on Saturday and I was amazed at the crowd at the library. and. You maybe can share just a little bit, but Darth Vader was walking around, and I mean, it was. There were kids. I've I've never been in the library when there's that many people there. So you could maybe share just a little bit about what was going on because it was crazy. Yeah. So we started Aircon, which is like a mental health fund, um, probably over five years ago. Um, it was really successful when we first started it. Gosh. Oh, it happened, and then it kind of lost some. Um, um, attendance, but yeah, there was probably about 200 there. There's a certain her costume contest, and uh, we have vendors come in, and it's, it's really well received. It's it was kids and family. parents and kids, and yeah, it was really a Thank success. You that. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I've heard good things about it. I, I was surprised, like I said, I was just dropping off books, and my there gosh, there was fun. lots going on. <laughs> downstairs for the kids, upstairs for vendors, comics, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and the same time, I, I forgot to mention, I was going to uh, mention the Municipal Band Festival that happened the same day. So it was a very busy day in Boone that day, and that went off really well as well. Uh, Jim was there, must, I think, for the MC, right? A little warm, a little warm. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of comments about art. Yeah. A lot of people. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. That just sparked my... Yeah, there's <laughs> anything, anything else? Any other council comments? <laughs> Okay, uh, seeing none, item number 11, we have closed session pursuant to Iowa code section 2151C to discuss strategy with council on a matter that is uh, presently in litigation, CK reference below, where its disclosure could be likely to prejudice or disadvantage, it, disadvantage the position of the city of Boone in that litigation. So, I need a motion to go. So moved. Second. Please roll. Benson? Yes. Sahoho Kelly? Yes. Mormon? Yes. Sussebeck? Yes. Samson? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Earth? Yes. Okay, we are now in closed session.